Hey, family, and thank you so much for tuning back into an, another segment here on GEMS Podcast. With me today is Asia Evans, and here is a bit about Asia, y'all. She is incredible. Let me just say that up front. She is a licensed mental health counselor practicing in New York City, armed and eternal optimism and an empathetic approach. Asia has been providing psychotherapy for over a decade. She creates a safe, comfortable, and judgment-free space to support individuals on their journey to becoming the best versions of themselves. As a certified financial social work counselor and trained in financial therapy, Asia owns and operates a private practice focused on financial wellness and the intersection of mental health and finances. Asia has a quarterly newsletter for Square Banking entitled Finance in Focus. She, is al- she has also been quoted as a subject matter expert known as a SME in Nerd Wallet, Bloomberg, The Washington Post, and CNBC. And today we're going to spend time focusing on mental health as well as pairing it with financial therapy, money and emotions, and just having that overall self-esteem because whether you realize it or not, whenever your finances aren't in order, it can affect your mental health and stability. And we are in Mental Health Awareness Month. So without further ado, please welcome Asia Evans to Jumps Podcast. Hey, Genesis, it's happy to be here. Um, it's a pleasure. I can't wait to talk about my two favorite topics, money and emotions. Um, yeah, and just get into it with you. Super awesome. And before we dive into your favorite topics, I definitely want to give the audience a chance to get to know you more on a personal level. So there's two options I like to do here. One is an icebreaker, and the second option is a rapid fire 10 question game. So what are you in the mood for? Um, let's do rapid fire. Okay, it's rapid. Here we go. Question number one. This is an easy one. Coffee, tea, or neither? Definitely tea. (laughs) Number two. If you could recreate any significant moment in your life, what would it be and why? That is good and very difficult. Um, significant moment. To be honest with you, the only thing I would ever change is just going back and telling my younger self to not stress about the people I was dating so much. Like, girl, you are okay. You're fabulous. And stop forgetting it. (laughs) Three, you just hit the lottery and you are supposed to donate to three charities. What are your charities? Um, I would definitely donate to an environmental cause. I would donate to... um, helping like kids who either are homeless or need assistance with kind of like getting education and stability. And the third one, I would probably donate, hmm, I mean, I wanna keep it environmental and for the kids, but um, that's a great question. Oh, I would donate to mental health, like definitely donate to making sure that there are more programs for mental health and accessible programs for mental health. Love it. Four, you're going on a trip, all expense paid. And here's the kicker. You just found out that unfortunately, they're not flying back to your home base right now. So where are you heading? I'm going to Paris. Ooh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, keep me there. It's fine. <laughs> Five, if you could have lunch or dinner with any person, past or present, who are you sitting down with? Michelle Obama. Oh, yes. <laughs> Six. The mood is right. You're listening to your jam. Everything is pumping. What are you listening to? Ooh, I've been listening to a lot of um, like Mediterranean um, instrumental music. So I'm kind of like that beach vibe off the coast of Greece. I'm like, yeah, that's the kind, I don't know what kind of music that is called, but that's what I'm jamming to. Seven, dream car. Ooh, um, right now it's a Range Rover, I'll be honest. I'm simple, just a Range Rover, like tricked out Range Rover, like very nice looking range. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. I'm with you with the cards, but I think I need to build those fast, faster than radio. So right now, I'm on, mine is a Lamborghini. Black, mm -hmm. black on the outside, black on the inside with some blue neon lights and the highest RPMs because when I get up to that stoplight, I need to make that horse puppy jump. You know, I am here with that and for that because, and I'll tell you, this is so funny that you say that. So I had... Um, a Volkswagen Jetta before I upgraded to my family car and I felt the same something about hearing that little extra like vroom when it like turned on so, and you're over here talking about a Lambo so if I could like add a little bit of extra something something to my range I'm here for it yes <laughs> I did like it you're right you are right about that hey favorite movie Ooh, oh so difficult um Gosh, that is a hard one. The one that's really coming to mind right now, it's because a close friend of mine brought it up is You Got Mail. And it's just like an easy movie that I enjoy during like cozy times when I want to drink tea and be mindless and watch something that feels really familiar. <laughs> I'm like, nah, another easy one. Favorite color? Blue. Yes, that's mine too. Yep. And 10, our pass or play question. Here are the rules. If you pass, our roles are reversed for this one question and you get to ask me something. If you play, I ask you one last question. So do you want to pass or play? Uh, I'll play. Okay. So you're on a deserted island. There is a gift shop, but your funds are limited and you only could buy one item. And here are your choices. Two bananas and a mango a t-shirt or your favorite CD, what are you buying? I am gonna assume I have clothes on, so I'm gonna buy my favorite CD so I have some music because we might be there for a bit. Yes, and thank you for playing Rapid Fire with Genesis. So let's dive into our segment, Money and Emotions. So Emily, because sometimes you just have to have both because without them, you are going to be a train wreck, y'all. <laughs> so Asia, walk us through why you're so passionate about this topic. And then we're going to dive into some practical tips that we need to be mindful when it comes to money because we have to steward our finances just to make sure that we are prepared for the present as well as the future. Sure. So I... um. I'm a certified therapist, so my licensure is a licensed mental health counselor, and I have been doing that for about 10 to 15 years at this point, um, all over the industry, which has been amazing, and when I moved to New York City, so I'm from upstate New York, but I moved to New York City, I was feeling like I got this big adult job, and I had been in my career for a while, but I don't want to break it to the audience, but you don't make a ton of money in mental health, especially not in the beginning. Um, I moved to New York, so I was making more money and I felt like I should be able to make it rain everywhere. I felt like I should be able to go to my brunch with my friends and pay for my car and pay my expensive New York City rent um, and shop if I wanted to. I felt like I should have the funds, should, um, to be able to do that. And what I realized very quickly was that I did not have those funds and my salary was not keeping up with my lifestyle. And I really was just lost and I very confused. And after a conversation with a cousin, he just kind of introduced me to personal finance and the importance of financial literacy. So I took the time to personally dive in, consuming, reading, following, just really getting into the content around personal finance. Um, so I felt really comfortable when my clients would then bring it up in their sessions to talk about money because I was on my own journey and I recognized that people really weren't talking about it enough, especially in um, the Black community in mental health. So I would continue doing that and continue allowing space for these conversations to continue and to flow. And then I found um, the FTA, which stands for the Financial Therapy Association, and then as well as the Center for um, Financial Social Work. And I got certified and trained um, and then started really integrating it more so into 
um, the conversations that I was having with my practice. So I was already talking about this. I just didn't really know that other people were talking about it too until I found um, the two association in the center. Wow, and I'm so glad that your cousin brought it to your attention and just spread that awareness because I often find that some of the younger people, they are the ones that are left out because their parents don't know how to bridge the gap to have the, those conversations because maybe they're not a good steward when it comes to their finances. And I feel like schools nowadays should be teaching financial literacy at a younger age because we're not setting up our children for success. We teach them, yes, all these other subjects, but how many times do you use those subjects? Like the stuff that I learned in high school and some of the stuff I learned in college, I'm not even using it today. So it's just kind of like a waste of time. But <laughs> definitely, and you're definitely correct. And I think people don't realize that we form our beliefs and our ideas about money around age seven or before. So if we're not having any conversations about money before, or you're in a family or witnessing experiences of kind of financial instability or questionable financial choices throughout your life, and then once you get in a, become an adult and have to deal with it and manage it, you have set a foundation for what you believe about money before you even actually start talking about money. So I couldn't agree with you more that we need to start educating our kids way earlier about money um, because that's when we start making our first judgments on what is good behavior, quote unquote, what's quote unquote bad behavior and what to do with our money when we start accumulating it. Absolutely. And then I do see a difference in demographics. If you look at someone who is African American or a person of color in comparison to a non melanated um, individual, they're the non melanated individuals, they teach their kids about money early on, like they put them on credit cards, that way they're establishing their credit, then African American people, they want to put light bills and other things in their children's name. And that's messing up their credit. So in order to really have generational wealth and financial literacy and prosperity, we have to know where do we go for the information. And wherever you go for the information, is it credible? Does it make sense? Do you understand? Do you feel like you have a safe and an open environment where you can have these conversations? Because sometimes it's taboo to ask people about savings, 401k, retirement, life insurance, and so many other things. And all of those are within the financial realm. And it's like, what vehicle are you driving so you can make sure that you are living life optimally? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's so important. And we just need to talk about it way more. <laughs> so with some of the clients that you have, what are some of the reoccurring themes that you've seen with your clients? And how have you been able to help them move it from like, oh, it's just another chore on my to do list to really making necessary steps in order to start transitioning their life to really have that transition period. But then during that transition period, you see the transformation take place. Um, so one big thing that comes up with my clients is they are the first generate, like a first generation wealth builder. So they are now in a financial position that may be able to impact previous generations and generations after them. And how do they handle what that means to them? Um, how their family might look at them now that they are quote unquote making money or rich <laughs> and, how to navigate what type of boundaries you may want to have. So of course, it's a positive thing. They have more money. They're able to give back in ways to their community, to their family. That feels really good, but also making sure that they're taking care of their future and taking care of their own financial goals. And sometimes that gets really complicated and emotional and nuanced to sell, set healthy boundaries with your family and with yourself around how, um, what you do with your money and how you do it. So when it comes to like the method, pay yourself first, because I'm going to use it from the church analogy, because I come from a religious and spiritual background. They're like, oh, you got to pay your tithes and offering. But why don't you pay yourself first, pay your tithes and offering, and then whatever else you live off, you live off of that. That way you're putting something up for rainy days or having those emergency funds. I think someone said you should have three to six months of emergency 
emergency funds. And now with inflation, I think I would even stretch a little bit beyond six months. And then also make sure that you're paying things on time. And then once you pay something off, if you have other debts, I always encourage people to take the amount of money that you would have spent paying off that bill and chunk it over to the next debt that you have with the highest interest, like if it's a credit card or et cetera. Like what are some other practical tips and um, tools that you help them navigate through just so they could be chipping away at that debt so they could really have financial freedom and feel free to re reframe the question. Sure. So I think when you're thinking about what tools or what methods am I using, first, you have to start with your why. Like, what am I doing? What do I want? Why am I doing this? I think a lot of people forget to ask themselves what they want. Um, and that can then inform why you're doing it. So if your goal is in the future, I want to be able to retire early or in the future, I want to be able to send my kid to college with no student loans. I want to be able to pay for their college. If that's a goal of yours, that's what you want. So let's start there. After that, what are the steps that you need to do to make that possible? Okay. Yes, exactly what you said, Genesis, like have an emergency fund, depending upon what your life looks like, is your job stable? Um, do you work for yourself? That is going to inform how long you might need a emergency fund. So three to six months for somebody who is self-employed, it might be six to 12 months because if their income isn't there, what does that mean for their family? So really taking the time to make your plan personalized for what is important for you. Um, and if you have a family, your family as well. So looking at what you want, making sure you have emergency fund, looking at debt, um, deciding, like I know for me in the past, I've been emotional about some of my debts and like, no, I just wanna get rid of it. And that was a motivator for me to get rid of the debt, to pay it down, but decide what is a priority for you. So if you have debt, you there are two methods, the snowball method or the avalanche method. And then there's also the emotional method, like pay off the things that are bothering you the most, quote unquote. Um, so after you do that, to your very point, automate it. If you know, pay yourself first, pay your bills. If you know you want to retire early um, before, and I define early as before the traditional age of 65, then what? how much money do you need to put into a Roth IRA or a retirement account or um, an investment account that allows you to get to what you want to be at? Um, when you want to retire. So there are a ton of calculators. You can Google a retirement calculator um, to just figure out, hey, I want to be this old when I retire. I have this much money. This is the percentage. I'm comfortable, like if you're conservative or not, you know, with the stock market going up and down. And this is how much I'm able to put in a month to figure out what the goal would be to have in your account by time you retire. So those are some of the vehicles that, and just kind of tools that I have talked to my clients about using um, and figuring out like what's a priority. How do you make sure that you can live your life as well as pay down debt and in, invest at the same time? Because you don't really feel good about what you're doing if you don't know what you want and if you don't if you're not paying attention to how, what it's doing to you emotionally. How do you feel while you're paying off all your debt? Are you getting exhausted? Are you feeling beaten down by it? If you are, then we need to, to do something else. So just being aware of how you feel throughout your journey is really important. Absolutely. And that's the other component that you speak on is that self-esteem. And I think a conduit of that self-esteem is knowing your wants versus your needs and really being transparent with yourself and honest, because when we're not honest with ourselves, then we're setting up ourselves up for failure because we're living in this pipe dream. So you mentioned the snowball method and the avalanche method. I want you to break those two down just so we could put some context for the audience there. 
Sure. So it's more about um, interest payments. Um, so the avalanche method is when you are lining up all of your debts. So make a whole list of them, um, every single one, and make sure that you know like what it is for. So whether it could be um, a credit card, make sure you know the interest rate and how much of the debt you have. And after that, just break it down on a list of the lowest interest rate to the highest um, so that you know. So there it is in order. And I think you can like actually flip it. So go highest to lowest. So once you know the avalanche method is about paying off your highest interest rate debt first and do obviously pay the minimums of everything else. So once you pay the first one, any extra money that you have that you are able to give to that debt, it goes straight to that first debt. And once that's paid off, the minimum plus all of the extra that you had that you were putting towards it on a monthly basis goes to the next highest level interest rate and so on and so forth. So you're able to kind of avalanche all of the money that you were putting to the first debt into the next one. The snowball method actually goes from not the interest rate, but the amount of debt that you have. So with the snowball debt, the snowball method, you use the smallest amount of debt that you have, line it up all the way to the highest amount and keep paying the minimums like you would do with the other method and throw all, everything that you can towards that lowest amount of debt that you have to pay it off as quickly as possible and then roll that into the next highest that you have. Same thing, pay all your minimums, take that minimum for the first debt, apply it to the second debt on top of all your extra money and keep working it down until hopefully you're debt free. <laughs> That's really great. And thank you for walking it, walking us through that because I definitely want the audience to connect with that. And one thing that I'll chime in and say after that is whenever you are paying extra on top of the minimum, make sure you let that, um, holder know that you want it to go towards the principal balance because if not they're going to just deduct it from the next payment and then you're going to still see the interest rates accumulate and you're like wait I'm paying extra why am I not seeing this chip away faster so make sure you let them know and that the same goes for like those mortgage payments because oh boy we all know the interest rates can be high so Asia, do you want to say anything else about the self-esteem component whenever we're thinking about money and emotions? Sure. I think a lot of people feel like money shouldn't be emotional or that it isn't emotional. I think traditional personal finance information left emotions out of money. And to my point of like we develop our beliefs about money before in and around age seven, that's a whole lot of life and a whole lot of emotion that you experience during that time. So we cannot separate money and emotion. We have to pay attention to it and just recognize what comes up for you. And I say self-esteem because I really do feel like self-esteem is a crisis that's bumbling, bubbling up a um, underneath the surface that we're not paying enough attention to. And a lot of people do not feel good about how they're managing their money or they feel really bad about their debt. And you don't need to feel bad about it if you have a plan and if you are working it the way that you are able to work it. It's not about comparing it to somebody else. This is your journey and you only get one. So let's make sure that you are taking the time to feed yourself and pour into yourself and help your self-esteem with knowing, hey, I'm doing the best that I can and I'm going to get information or talk to more people about it so that I don't feel like I am feeling bad about myself alone. So it's just really important that we pay attention to how we're feeling, what's going on for us emotionally, because oftentimes it impacts how we, how we deal with our money. Absolutely. Connect with your whole self, shift those paradigms, and then talk to somebody who is a subject matter expert in the financial space so you can really know that you're setting yourself up for success. And having problems when you walk in, in there is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength because you made the first step, which is you took action so you could get yourself the resources and the help that you need so you won't be in this predicament. And Asia, as we begin to wind down, I want you to leave the listeners and the viewers with your call to action for this segment. 
Sure, um, please talk about money. Please talk about your emotions. Um, it does not have to be to anybody. It doesn't have to be to a stranger. It can be with a trusted person, whether that is a family member, a friend, somebody in your community, but talk about it because we all have to navigate it. We all have to navigate money in some way, shape or form. And if you find that you're feeling bad about it, there is no reason for you to be feeling bad about it alone because there are millions of people who feel the same way. And you might be helping somebody and just sharing what's going on for you too. So please talk about it. And Asia, how can they connect with you via your website and share where you primarily hang out on social media? Sure. So my website is my name, Asia, A-J-A Evans Counseling. Dot com, And I am on mostly Instagram. Um, I dabble in Twitter a little bit and LinkedIn, but my Instagram handle is Asia, A-J-A-E, therapy. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of Jump's podcast. All of Asia's contact information will be in the show notes. So just scroll down to the bottom and connect with her. And I challenge you to go look at your finances today. See where you are currently and where you need to be in order to live life optimally, stress-free. Because don't allow your financial burdens to stress you out because there is a way that you can overcome that. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're on 40 plus platforms. You could also see all things video content on YouTube by typing at gems with Genesis Amars Kemp. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank each one of you for tuning in on a regular basis. Because of you, we are now ranked in the top two and a half percent globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www.listennotes.com, which means we need sponsors to continue to grow the mission to bring educational, inspiration, and motivational topics. You can find out more by heading on over to genesisamarskemp.net and hitting that podcast tab to learn more info. Until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing one.